In this video, I will show you how to make a haptic glove with an Arduino. As you can see, I have mounted little vibration motors on the fingertips of this glove. These are the same type of motor that make video game controllers, cell phones, and VR or virtual reality controllers vibrate. And by making them vibrate, you can create a tactile sensation and, especially when using virtual reality, make somebody feel or give them the illusion that they're touching or feeling something that isn't actually there. So I am not going to hook this up to a real virtual reality system, but I will show you how to connect it to an Arduino and use a sensor. For example, this ultrasonic sensor, which measures distance, kind of like a bat using echolocation. It sends out bursts of ultrasonic sound and measures how long they take to reflect back, such that when I move my hand over the sensor, the motors vibrate. So it feels like when I reach into a certain region of space or get closer to the sensor, that I'm getting that haptic or tactile feedback, and I feel like there's something there. Now we're going to switch over to the computer in a minute to look at the circuit diagram and code because it's a little messy to film everything in the real world here. But first I did want to zoom in and talk about the motors. You may see these called pancake motors because of their flat shape. And if you check out the link in the description to the instructions on our website, we have a materials list with links for where you can buy them. You need to be careful with these motors because the wires are very thin and fragile. It is easy to kind of accidentally yank them off and break them and they're very hard to reattach so i have applied a little dab of extra glue or adhesive to reinforce those motors at the base and then some of these motors come with an adhesive backing you peel off a paper cover and then there's some sticky adhesive that you can use to stick them to the fabric that might not be good enough to hold them onto the gloves long term so you might want to use some stronger fabric glue or super glue or something and then I have soldered longer, flexible, stranded wires to the tiny motor wires and wrapped them in some heat shrink tubing and then left that wire pretty long so I have room to move my hand around. And I run all of those over to the breadboard, which is connected to the Arduino. So we have some additional resources on our website and videos about using wire, stripping wire, soldering, using a breadboard, all of that kind of background electronics knowledge that you will need to do a project like this. We also have an entire Arduino tutorial series if you have never used an Arduino before. So we highly recommend before you try to jump right into a project like this, even though it's tempting to go ahead and build something fun right away, to familiarize yourself with the basics or else this project is going to be kind of difficult if you've never used an Arduino, never used a breadboard, or never done soldering before. So again, all of that information is on our website and we have other tutorials on our YouTube channel. Make sure you check out those links in the description before you continue with this project. Let's switch over to the computer to talk about the circuit. This is an online program called Tinkercad Circuits. It is a free online circuit and Arduino simulator that we use for many of our videos. Again, you can find more information about that from the various links in the description and our Arduino tutorial series. If you go to the written instructions on our website, you can also find a link to this circuit so you can create your own Tinkercad account and run the simulation yourself. So a high level overview of the circuit, we have two main parts. We have the vibration motors. I have five, one on each fingertip, including the thumb. You don't need to use five. You could use more, you could use less, but I will show you how to connect each one of them individually to the Arduino. I am also using an HCSRO4 ultrasonic distance sensor. Again, this sensor works kind of like a bat by sending out sound and it reflects back and it measures the amount of time it takes to reflect back and uses that to measure distance. The farther away something is, the longer it's gonna take the sound to reflect back. So I will show you how to use this, but you don't have to use an ultrasonic sensor for your project. If you wanna make your glove react to something else, there are tons of other sensors that are compatible with an Arduino, and our Arduino tutorial series covers many of them. Let's start by talking about how we connect the motors. You may have noticed that there are a bunch of other parts on my breadboard here labeled NMOS, which stands for N-Channel MOSFET, we're not going to go into the details of what that means in this video, but this is a type of transistor. You can think of a transistor like a kind of electronic switch or control valve that lets us control the electrical current flowing through these motors. And we need these transistors because the Arduino itself cannot provide enough current to drive the motors directly with its pins. So if you have started out with Arduino before, you may be used to connecting things like LEDs directly to the Arduino pins, and that's fine because LEDs don't provide very much current. They're very efficient and can make a lot of light from a relatively low amount of current. But motors move, and that just requires more current, even for very tiny motors. So these transistors are going to act kind of like control valves that, again, help us 
still use the Arduino, we're still using the pins as a control signal to turn the motors on and off, but the actual current that flows through the motors is going to come from the Arduino's five volt pin, which can provide more current than the individual pins. Now, if you are using a lot of motors, you wanna cover a glove in a dozen of these and have them all on full speed at once, then you might actually also be pushing the current limit of the five volt pin. So we have another video in our Arduino tutorial series about external power and how you can power an Arduino project with an external battery pack if you need bigger motors or more motors or very bright lights or something like that. Not gonna cover that in this video, we're just gonna assume we're using the five volt pin to provide power for the motors. That means we are going to connect the Arduino's five volt and ground pins to the breadboard's positive and negative buses. And then we are going to connect the positive and negative buses on opposite sides of the breadboard to each other because we want access to five volts everywhere in the project. Again, for a project using a separate external battery pack with a different voltage, you would not connect those two positive buses if you have them operating at two different voltages, but you would still connect the negative buses because your whole project needs a common ground. And rather than repeating this for all five motors, we're just gonna zoom in and look at the MOSFET connections for one of the motors. So thankfully, Tinkercad labels the pins when you hover over them with your mouse. So we can see that a MOSFET has three pins labeled gate, drain, and source. It is important to put each pin in its own row of the breadboard. Another one of the nice things about Tinkercad is that it highlights in green the other holes that are connected when you mouse over one. So a common mistake I will see students make sometimes when they're just starting out is to put a MOSFET or part with multiple pins in a breadboard like this, and all of the holes in that row are connected. So if you do that, you have shorted all three of these pins together and your MOSFET is not going to work. Those pins need to be in different rows. Now the gate is the control pin. That's the pin that is going to accept a signal from the Arduino to turn the motor on and off. So we're going to use a jumper wire in the same row as the gate pin to connect to an Arduino pin of our choice. If you just want to turn the motor on and off, so either totally off or on full speed, you can use any pin. If you want to vary the intensity of the vibration, then you need to use something called pulse width modulation or PWM and you need one of the pins with the little tilde or squiggly sign next to it. So I want to keep the option for using PWM in the future. So you can see I have connected my first motor to pin three here. Now going a little out of order here, the source pin, which is labeled S here in Tinkercad, probably not gonna be labeled on a physical MOSFET in the real world. So you will need to count the pins from left to right. The rightmost pin is gonna go directly to ground just with a short jumper wire. And then the middle pin, the drain, is going to connect to the motor. Now, I have it connected to the negative wire of the motor here. For these little vibration motors, they're usually not polar, so it doesn't matter if you switch the wires, it's just still going to vibrate. For a regular DC motor with a rotating output shaft, switching those wires is going to switch the direction of rotation. But again, it doesn't really matter here. So I have the drain pin of the MOSFET connected to the negative wire of the motor, and again, this is just shown with these jumper wires here in Tinkercad, but on the physical circuit we saw at the beginning of the video, this is a separate wire that is soldered and heat shrinked to the smaller, more fragile motor wire. The positive wire from the motor then goes to the positive bus on the breadboard to connect to five volts. So how this works is when the corresponding Arduino pin is low, then the MOSFET is off and no current flows through the motor when pin three goes high or turns on, the MOSFET is going to turn on. So think of it kind of like a valve or a faucet that lets electrical current flow. But instead of the current that powers the motor flowing out of the Arduino pin here, it's going to flow from the positive bus, from the Arduino five volts, through the motor, into the positive wire, out through the negative wire, into the drain pin, through the MOSFET, and then out the source to ground, but again, the gate, the control pin, is not actually drawing any current, so these lower power Arduino pins don't have to provide power for the motor. Now, before we continue with the circuit, I'd like to take a minute to tell you a little more about us. Science Buddies is a nonprofit with completely free instructions for over a thousand hands-on science and engineering projects on our website, sciencebuddies.org. 
You can browse these projects by the area of science. So if you know you're interested in robotics, you can look through all of our robotics projects. However, if you're not sure what kind of project you want to do, you can take a quiz about your interests and we'll help find a project for you. We also have many other resources on our website for parents and teachers. For example, if you're a teacher, we can help you manage your students while they're doing a science fair. We love hearing from our users, so we'd appreciate if you can help us out. If you're watching this video, leave a comment and let us know whether you're a student, parent, or educator, and why you're watching this video. For example, if you're doing this for a school project, just doing it for fun, or maybe an after-school club or organization. We appreciate your help, and now let's get back to the circuit. Once you have that set up for one motor, it's pretty easy to do them for more because you just duplicate that connection with a new MOSFET for each motor. And I should clarify, that is if you want independent control of the motors, if you want to be able to turn them on and off separately. If you want any two or more motors to always turn on together, then you can wire the motors in parallel by connecting one of the motor's ground wires to the same MOSFET. So if I do this, if I move this wire down here, when this MOSFET turns on, both of these motors are going to turn on. They are both connected to five volts to the power bus, and they have both of their negative wires connected to the drain pin of this MOSFET. So if for whatever reason, I only ever wanna turn these two motors on at the same time, I never need to turn them on separately, then I only need one MOSFET for both of them, I don't need separate. But for maximum flexibility and being able to control the motors independently, you're going to want one MOSFET for each one. Now for the ultrasonic sensor, I'll go over this quickly because we do have another video that goes into this ultrasonic sensor in more detail, again in our Arduino tutorial series linked in the description. It has four pins, VCC or power, trig, which stands for trigger, echo, and GND, which stands for ground. So VCC is going to go to five volts, ground is going to go to the negative bus on the breadboard, and I have the trigger pin connected to Arduino pin 13 and the echo pin connected to pin 12, but you could choose any other available pins if you don't wanna use 12 and 13. Now let's look at the code, which again, you can download from the link in the description. Some of this is based on example code for the ping ultrasonic sensor, which is similar to the HCS-04, but only uses one pin for combined trigger and echo signals instead of two separate pins. So first we are going to declare variables to tell the Arduino which pins we are using for trigger and echo. Again, I'm using 12 and 13, but you could use something else. I am going to declare a variable for the threshold in centimeters below which I want to turn the motors on. We'll see the logic of that later in the program, but when my hand gets close enough to the sensor that I want the motors to turn on. Otherwise, if it's far enough away, I'm going to turn it off. I am going to declare an array for my motor control pins. I am doing that because as you'll see later, I'm just gonna use a loop to do the same thing for all five pins. If you don't want to just turn all the motors on or off at once, you probably wouldn't do that. And you could give these different variable names like motor one, motor two, and so on. But for compactness and keeping my code a little neater, I decided to do it in an array. In my setup function, which is my code that only one runs once, I'm going to initialize serial communication to print out my measured distance value, which is useful for debugging purposes and making sure the sensor is working. I'm going to use the pin, co pin mode command to set my trigger pin as an output and my echo pin as an input. And then again, here is one of the loops I referenced. So rather than having five different pin mode commands, I have a for loop and I only have pin mode in there once to set each individual motor pin as an output. Next in the loop function, and again, the beginning here is part of the example code for the ping ultrasonic sensor modified slightly. We declare some variables for the duration of the output pulse from the sensor that corresponds to how long it takes the sound to echo back, and then variables for the distance in both inches and centimeters. We send a trigger pulse to the sensor, so this is what tells it, hey, it's time to take a reading. So we set the trigger pin low, have a very short delay, set the trigger pin high, another short delay, and set the trigger pin low again. So that just sends a short positive pulse to the sensor to tell it to take a reading. We then listen for the return pulse, which is what the Arduino pulse in command does. It will measure the duration of that pulse. 
but that is in microseconds, so we need to convert it to distance units, which is done if you scroll down to the bottom. There's a function that explains the math for doing that based on the speed of sound. I'm not going to go over it in this video, but if you know how fast sound moves and you know how long it takes for sound to go out and back, then you can calculate the distance to the object. So there are functions that convert that time to both inches and centimeters, and then it prints them out to the serial monitor, which you can use to make sure your sensor is working. Next, we have the main logic of the program, which is this if else statement that again is kind of doing the simplest thing. If the distance in centimeters is below that threshold value I defined at the beginning of the program, I'm just going to turn all the motors on. So like you saw at the beginning of the video, if I'm moving my hand around in space or gradually moving it closer to the sensor, once it detects anything below that threshold, it's just going to turn all five motors on full speed else. If the distance is greater than that threshold, it's going to turn the motors off and that's all it's going to do. So this is a simple kind of proof of concept to get this working. But if you are doing this for say a science or engineering fair for our, for your school, you shouldn't just copy our code. You should think about what other functionality you could add here. For example, since I use those PWM pins rather than just turning the motor on or off, I could control the speed or the strength of the, the vibration using the Arduino analog write command. And you can look up tutorials or Arduino do documentation about how to do that. And maybe think about how you could have a relationship between that speed and the distance. For example, you could make the vibrations stronger, make the vibrations faster as your hand gets closer to the sensor. Or maybe you want to use multiple sensors and have different zones that activate different motors. Or again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, use a totally different sensor. It doesn't have to be an ultrasonic sensor at all. So there are a ton of different ways you can keep this same circuit that we've shown you how to set up, but change the code to change the behavior of the system. And again, that's really what you should be thinking about if you want to do this for an individual project and add your own unique twist or creativity to it. This basic if else statement is just to kind of help you make sure it's working, but it isn't really intended that this is what you would submit for a science project. You should write your own code and think of something a little more creative to do here. Just to demonstrate the behavior of this very simple code, because again, Tinkercad is a online circuit simulator, I'm going to hit the start simulation button up here. And clearly I cannot move a physical object back and forth in front of this sensor, which is pointed out of my screen, and I'm not going to be able to feel the motors vibrate. But you will see that in Tinkercad, what you can do is click on the sensor while the simulation is running. And it gives you this sort of imaginary ball that you can move around in front of the sensor, and it will give a little readout for the distance here. So I set my threshold pretty low at 20 centimeters. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. And we see that as I move this closer and closer, I can also open the serial monitor. And we'll see the distance printing out here. And my motors are off. As you'll see in a minute, it will animate motion when the motors turn on. Motors are still off, still off, still off. But the moment I get below 20 centimeters, the motors turn on as it indicates with this little vibration motion. And if I move farther away again or outside of the field of view of the sensor, so kind of if you put the object off to the side, then the sound isn't going to reflect off of it very well, then the motors turn off again. So there you go. Remember that you can find a lot more information, including our Arduino tutorial series, a link to the written instructions on our website with a materials list and where you can download this code and a link to the Tinkercad circuit simulation that you can make a copy of all down in the description of this video. And for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, check out our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.